This section examines cylinder heads. The cylinder head bolts onto the top of the cylinder block where it forms the top of the combustion chamber. Inline engines of light vehicles have just one cylinder head for all the cylinders. Larger inline engines can have two or more. V-type and horizontally opposed engines have a separate cylinder head for each bank of cylinders. Just as with engine blocks, cylinder heads can be made of cast iron or aluminium alloy. A head made of aluminium alloy is lighter than if it were made of cast iron. Aluminium also conducts heat away more quickly than iron. So with an aluminium alloy head, the heat of combustion can be conducted away into the coolant more quickly. Manufacturing the head is similar to manufacturing the block. A casting mould is made. Sand cores are put in to form any hollow areas. Depending on the engine, these can be for coolant and lubricant passages and inlet and exhaust ports. Air-cooled engines have cooling fins cast into the cylinder head. The underside of the head is shaped to form the combustion chamber. Molten metal is poured in and allowed to cool. The cores are broken out and removed and the cylinder head cleaned of any sand. After casting comes machining. Surfaces that must seal are machined flat. Holes are drilled and tapped for attaching bolts and studs. In sand cast heads, the large holes that had contained sand are machined, then fitted with soft metal plugs called core plugs. Cylinder heads are designed to help improve the swirl or turbulence of the air fuel mixture and prevent fuel droplets settling on the surfaces of the combustion chamber or cylinder walls. When air fuel mixture is compressed between the piston and the flat part of the cylinder head, it produces what's called squish. That means squeezing of the gases to increase their velocity and turbulence. In petrol engines, the three most popular combustion chamber designs are called hemispherical or pent roof, bathtub and wedge. This is the hemispherical or pent roof combustion chamber. It has the intake valve on one side of the chamber and the exhaust valve on the other. This provides cross flow. Air fuel mixture enters on one side and exhaust gases exit on the other. Positioning the valves in this way leaves room for relatively large valves and ports and that helps the engine breathe. Breathing refers to the engine taking in the air or air fuel mixture. Fuel starts to burn at the plug. Then burning travels outward in all directions. This is called flame propagation. With the plug in the middle of the hemisphere, the flame front has less distance to travel than in some other designs. This gives rapid and effective combustion. This design is common in a lot of passenger vehicles. The bathtub combustion chamber is oval shaped, like an inverted bathtub. Valves are mounted vertically and side by side, making them simple to operate. The plug is to one side and that creates a short flame path. It all helps increase turbulence. The wedge-shaped combustion chamber tapers away from the plug, which is at the thick end of the wedge. The valves are in line and inclined from the vertical. This design usually has a smaller surface area than the others, with less area where fuel droplets can condense. 
less fuel is left unburned after combustion, which reduces hydrocarbon exhaust emissions. And since the flame is directed towards the small end of the wedge, damage caused by detonation is reduced. This is a poppet or mushroom valve. It has two main parts, a stem and a head. It fits into a port in the head. Its face makes a gas tight seal against the seat. During operation, the head near the face of the valve transfers heat to the seat. Some is conducted up into the valve stem. The stem transfers heat on to the guide, so the stem is the valve's coolest part. The valve seat and guide are also cooled by coolant in passages around the valve ports. When a valve does not seat properly, there's a smaller area where heat transfer can occur. That means the face will overheat. Local hot spots can reach such extreme temperatures that the edge of the valve can actually burn. The width of the valve seat is important. A narrow seat is desirable because a thin circular contact with the valve face forms an efficient seal. But a wider seat is better for transferring heat from the valve to the cylinder head. A common compromise is for the inlet valve to have a narrower seat than the exhaust valve. In some cast iron cylinder heads, the seats are cut directly into the edge of the valve port. These valve seat areas are machined from the metal of the cylinder head. In some engines, the valve seat area is hardened during manufacture. In others, hard metal valve seat inserts are pressed into the machined holes. Valve seat inserts are metal rings that match the shape of the valve. They're usually made of an iron alloy. They're used in aluminium cylinder heads to provide a sealing surface for seating the valve. Leaded fuels leave a deposit on the valve that protects the valve seat. With unleaded petrol, however, this deposit doesn't occur, and all cast iron heads used with unleaded petrol have hardened valve seats. The faces of the valve are ground at an angle of 45 degrees or 30 degrees. Some engines use 30 degrees or 45 degree face angles for inlet valves and 45 degrees for exhaust valves. Valve seats are often ground to the same angle as the valve face, but they can differ. The difference is called an interference angle. An interference angle allows for a quick bedding in of the valve face to the seat on new engines. It may also allow for slight changes in angle as a valve heats and expands. <laughs> 